Hey, Robot Makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So do you want to know a bit more about uh, Bittle? I hope that's how you pronounce it, the robot dog from Pet Petoy. I hope that's how you pronounce that as well. I always thought it was Pet I.O., but it's Petoy. The, then this is the show for you. So let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, I bring them to life with code, and have a whole load of fun along the way. So um, I think we have to put the little notification on today because I did get spent, sent this... Uh, this robot dog um, for free. So I just wanted to make sure we have that flagged up and everybody's good with that. Okay, so let's go over to the unboxing and review. That's what today's show is all about. I might go and turn off the, <laughs> the little robot behind me in a minute because he's making a bit of noise there. In fact, I'll do that now. There we go. <laughs> he switched off. I've got my booboo boo t-shirt on as well <laughs> today. <laughs> so yes, today's session goals are all about uh, looking at um, Bittle, which is the uh, the brother, I guess, or the sister to Nibble, which is the open source open cat, which is where it all started. So we're going to have a look at what Bittle is. Um, we're going to have a look at the history and evolution from lolly sticks to production. We're going to have a quick look at some of the options, the colors, the assembly, um, some of the specifications and my new scoring system for scoring and reviewing things because I thought I need to do this a bit more scientifically rather than just everything's a five. And then we'll unbox it. We'll get on and start putting this thing together. I have no idea how long it takes one box um, and build, but we'll have a go and try and do it as quickly as possible to see if we can get it up and running. And then at the end of that, we'll have the, the live Q&A uh, mailbox and and, um, just see how everybody's everybody's doing okay so let me just turn down actually how do I turn off the notification sounds because there we go if I do that that should stop those notification sounds popping up so this is uh, Bittle it's the palm size open source quadruped robot dog um, it's got an impressive performance for such a tiny package this is from their website by the way uh, just easy to cut and paste some of this and it's highly programmable with lifelike behaviors of a four-legged animal um, so very similar to the open cat I built one of these open cats quite a while ago and I modified it last Easter to make a robot bunny version as well as a wobbly wobbly leg going on there I think one of his servos has died anyway that's not the one that we're going to be looking at today but that's certainly the thing that inspired this package so it's an evolution of the open cat project initially developed by uh, Petoi founder and I hope I don't butcher your name Rongzong Lee okay let's get to our next page oops did I do two pages then no, I didn't. So OpenCat is where it all started. Uh, so this was the, the, the original creation um, that uh, Rongzong created. Um, it's a four-legged robot platform and you can do all kinds of things with this. So the original one was powered, I think, by an Arduino. I can't remember actually because I've not looked at the original ones. I've powered them with, with the Pimeroni uh, Servo 2040 because it's perfect for plugging in lots of servos. Um, so this started as OpenCat, and uh, he started this project in 2016. And we'll have a look at uh, what inspired him to do that. And the, he, he started a crowdfunding campaign and went on to, um, to, to launch Nibble, which is their, their first cat product uh, on Indiegogo. And in 2020, the second product came out, which is Bittle. So you've got Nibble and Bittle, uh, and they, they raised over uh, half a million dollars on uh, on Kickstarter, so that's quite impressive. Interested to know why they went from Indiegogo to Kickstarter. I'm not sure what the story is there. So that's the picture of my little cat that I've got next to me there. So this is the um, the project that kind of kickstarted, as it were, the uh, the project to create um, Bittle. Um, so my version of this uses the, like I said, the Servo 2040 for its main process board. Um, it has an external power pack. You can just use like a regular. Um, I'd love to use the Pimeroni little Gallium batteries, but you can use any kind of USB power bank for that. Um, and the software and voltage monitoring is also part of that Servo 2040 board. So it's really good to be able to sort of make sure the servos aren't sort of overtaxing or overloaded. You can actually monitor the, uh, the voltage on them, the current draw, and if necessary, cut them off. And that also has the benefit of having this Quest connector, the quick Stemma QT connector. So you can add in all kinds of extra sensors and... Um, um, extras via the uh, I squared C and it's a perfect size for small robots I love robots that you can sort of fit in your hand and this is the kind of ideal robot for that and the unusual thing about these robots is they have four legs uh, and I think they have about 11 servos on in them so there's quite a few servos so the history of how this started um, basically he, he, I think um, uh, 
The wrong zone was very much inspired by Boston Dynamics, the, the spot micro dog or spot dog. And uh, that went viral in 2015. So in 2016, um, it says here he, he started in his dorm room prototyping his own version of this. And he literally used lolly sticks, sort of little wooden sticks about this big, punched, you know, drilled holes in them to, to make them articulate and came up with this design, which pretty much hasn't changed right up to the, the Bittle dog. So the, the actual structure is very, very similar, even though the materials have changed. Obviously, the, the design has refined quite a lot since uh, using uh, lolly sticks. Uh, there's things like springs in there to give these things a bit more resistance and uh, a bit of bounce when they're walking about. Um, and that's all that research and development has gone into it since then. So devoted all his time and resource to making this uh, a really, really great product. So you can see on the left hand side there, there's the sort of lolly sticks, um, that's the, the body, the actual legs themselves, you could see on the previous picture were basically just lolly sticks with a, a servo bolted onto one of them and there's a servo there. And you can see that the, the, the evolution of the robot has been small incremental changes, small incremental changes in the software as well as the hardware design. Um, and that's what we're going to be looking at today, what the, the final result of that is. And what can it actually do? So it's programmable. You can program it in all different kinds of programming languages. And these are the things that you do behind the scenes that, that don't look like you've actually improved the uh, the hardware in any way, but the software makes all the difference. So actually making a scratch light block coding system, making it uh, able to program in C++ and Python, that all requires development effort on the back end. Uh, and you don't often see the amount of effort that goes into that and the testing that goes into that too. So that all has happened in the background. You can basically just take this dog and you can plug it into like an Arduino IDE, start coding right away, or Python, or if you prefer the visual style, if you're working with children, then that's ideal for getting them up and running and getting their dog moving about. And it's also highly extensible. You can add a Raspberry Pi to this. You can remove that little back plate, that little black um, saddle thing on the back, and bolt on a Raspberry Pi, and then you can extend the AI capabilities, do object detection, classification, all that kind of good stuff. All the stuff that Bubo can do in the background as well. Um, so the onboard Arduino processor can, um, like it says, be enhanced by a Raspberry Pi, but that's not included. <laughs> you, have to, you have to bring that yourself. And it uses four legs for movement. Um, so the, the tail also moves. The neck has two degrees of freedom, so it can sort of move its head up and down and side to side, very much like the, um, the open cat does. So that has like an articulation that way as well as an articulation that way. And the design of that, the sort of structure of that is very similar too. Other things that they've improved upon the original OpenCat is the rechargeable LiPo battery. So this fits perfectly and is also perfectly balanced weight-wise on the back of the robot. Um, and you've also got that very nice sort of pan and tilt head design as well. So I like the way there's a bit of res re resistivity on the, the bite of the dog as well. So when you want to put something in its mouth, it sort of snaps back into place. And I've discovered a bit about where that bone is um, in the in the uh, the packs as well we can talk about that so it also has a detachable neck during a collision so if you your um it's designed to be able to easily detach snap off and reattach and it has nine fast digital um, servos um, so i think i counted 11 in mine i'm not sure i got that number from but maybe it's actually nine and the shock re reducing joints as well. So they've got little springs in them. And again, selecting the correct spring is something that you need to work on. You need to do a lot of testing on before you get the right number of, the right amount of um, resistivity on the springs so that it's not uh, too bouncy and not too stiff either. And the interlocking frame is another one of the really nice things about the original design, uh, even the 3D printed one, is how everything sort of slots together kind of clicks together in place. I particularly like how these um, these servos push in and get kind of captured in place. Um, so really like that on the, the original design and this one follows through with that too. So there's a couple of options when you're buying this. You can choose three different colors. You've got black, you've got black and yellow. I'm not sure which one I've got actually. We'll have a look in a second. And there is a black, yellow and blue. So he's got a different sort of shoulders. Um, upper arm and his mouth as well and it comes in three different varieties as well so you can either get it pre-assembled so the robot is already built you just sort of plug in and away you go you can get the construction version which is the one i've got which i think is the most fun one because you get to build it and uh, that's part of the fun isn't it it's like doing a, a lego set or a jigsaw puzzle or a meccano set something like that and then there's also a developer version not sure what the difference is with the developer version but again there's a separate one there when i checked the developer one wasn't actually in stock anywhere so spec-wise, we've got a few things to look at there. I love the appearance dog. 
that's an important specification there. The software that's supported is Codecraft. I've not looked at that before. That's their Scratch-based one. The Arduino IDE and uh, Python API for sending serial commands. That's great. Um, and you can use third-party iOS or Android apps as well, which is really good because if you want to use this uh, in an environment where you've not got a computer lugging around, you can just use your phone and connect to it, which is great. And assemble time by Petwai is um, 40 minutes. I'm sure it'll take us a bit longer to do that but, um, on our first go, but we'll see. Hopefully we'll do that okay. Number of joints is nine, so that's the servos. The, uh, the frame material is plastic. The color is black and yellow or blue or just black. And then the controller board is the Nye board. So this is like the Nibble board, I guess, that they developed for the original Nibble robot. And it's basically the same thing for the dog as well. And it's based on the AT Mega 328P, which is the exact same chip that's in the Arduino Uno version 3. So if you've used an Arduino, it's the same chip there. This does have an IMU on it as well. It's got a six axis uh, accelerometer and um, gyroscope. We've used the 650 a few times in some other projects. Um, so that's quite a familiar one to us. That's when I originally got working with the Smiles robots. It has four Grove connectors, which are the little uh, white connectors that you can plug on there. So if you've got any other Grove things, you can plug them in. And it has 16 pulse width modulation channels too. It has seven RGB NeoPixels as well. I'm interested to see those work. And you can use Serial UART, I squared C, Network or Infrared. Infrared, that's an interesting option. I didn't know, I guess that's for the handheld remote control. That would probably make sense. And it has official Bluetooth and Wi-Fi dongles available too. I'm not sure they come with this. And that's where the bone is. There's an additional add-on pack for accessories. There's a little camera you can put in its mouth. Um, and it also has Raspberry Pi support. But you have to bring your own Raspberry Pi for that too. So let's have a look at the review, shall we? So what I've done on um, the review, I've come up with this uh, Kev's Robot Evaluation Scoring thing. So there's five different scores that you can get in any area. And there is nine different categories that you can, uh, you'll be scored against. So uh, whenever I get sent something for review, I'll now be reviewing it against this. So price, we go from one where something is not very, uh, sorry, something is very expensive. So one is a poor score. Um, so virtually on not worth it. You've got two for the price, expensive, but worth it for the value add. Three, which is where I placed this one. So it's affordable and similar in price to its competitors. So originally I thought this was quite expensive. We'll get onto what the price is in a minute uh, for what it is. Um, actually it's not, it's about the same price as other competitive um, robot and robot dogs of the same kind of size. So actually it's not too expensive compared to its, um, its competitors, but objectively it's, I think it's quite expensive, but it is what it is. Uh, so four category would be cheap or great value for money and five would be free or very, very low cost. So uh, that's what I would classify that as. Okay, uh, sorry, just turning my volume down there because uh, I heard the uh, thing ping up. Next category then is ease of use. So I would say this one has some steps for construction because I've got the construction version, um, some of which might be complex. So let's see how we get on with that. So I've given that a three, it could probably be a four or five depending on how we go. So I might adjust my score upwards depending on how easy this is to do. Functionality wise, I would say this is um, it's quite a few innovative functions on it. Uh, does more than you expect. So some of the behaviors I've seen this dog do, I'm very impressed with it compared to what you can do writing your own code with something like this. So combined with the, the IMU, I think they've got some nice little tricks up the sleeve. So it's definitely innovative. Availability, I checked online, you can buy this in pretty much any country and it's in, mostly in stock. The only one I couldn't see was the development version, uh, but all the, the colors were available. And um, this, if, there is, if there is a short wait for uh, stock to be replenished, it, it, it's not very long at all, but I was, I was able to see these available right now. When I was scoring the Raspberry Pi 4, I basically went back and rescored a few of the projects and uh, that was scored basically a two. So limited availability with some available versions um, are available. Uh, next category then is aesthetics. So I've definitely said this one is very pleasing to the eye, very nice complementary colors, the yellow and the black and the, the, the type of yellow that they've chosen for this really works well. Um, and it's got a great fit and finish. All the surfaces, all the way that it fits together, there's no overlap, no gaps. It's really very nicely put together. And there's definitely an overall cohesive design to this. Um, this looks like it fits together as one unit. So very nice from an aesthetic point of view. Next is, and these are the last four, 
we have the build quality so it's definitely got a solid construction when i was putting this to just having a quick test to see how things fit together i've not built it entirely i'm just looking at the battery compartment um, very very nice construction all the parts fit together as intended no unexpected gaps no overlapping parts thinking here about the tesla when that was launched i believe there's like great big gaps in some of the uh, the panels where they fit together and they're sort of slightly off so the, the build quality on the original Teslas wasn't great, I understand. But on this one, very, very good. And there's definitely some high quality materials and parts used. So this isn't like cheap plastic. This is uh, good quality. And uh, the sort of metals and things that are used in it as well um, mean that this gets a, a good score. So I've got a bit of a, an error on that screen there. I'm not sure why it's got um, the documentation has got a two and a five. This should definitely have a five. The documentation is spot on. We'll have a look at that as we build it in a minute. It's really good quality documentation in multiple languages. All the features are covered. You've got the diagrams for how to put it together, even videos. Um, there's a mechanical and circuit diagrams as well. Example code and some advanced topics covered there as well. So very happy with the documentation and the, the packaging. So the... Uh, the packaging this is where i added these two because i thought it'd be, it, it wouldn't be right if i had a, a scoring system that didn't include some kind of element of um environmentalism so from a packaging point of view when we open this up in a minute you'll see there is lots of plastic there's lots of unnecessary plastic i would say i'm not sure what they actually add to the value uh, of the product other than just keeping everything exactly in place where they intended it to but everything's quite tightly packed in there anyway i don't think it's going anywhere uh, and even if it's like roughly handled during pack by, during transport i think this would be fine so i'm not sure why they've put so much plastic in there so to get a good score on uh, the packaging side you need to be environmentally friendly so no real plastics used in the packaging you could just use cardboard um, and the packaging should be designed for recycling so the kind of plastic that they, they're using i'm not sure if that's recyclable or not um, so the sort of uh, transparent type plastic and the, pa the packaging should be small. It should be basically the, the size of the thing that's in it and no bigger. It shouldn't have any lo lots of space in there. I hate it when you get like a memory card and you get like an Amazon box and it's huge and you think how much how much extra energy is it taken to transport that because it's so big and uh, the extra space means that other things can't be packaged alongside it as well. So that bit how you get a five. Um, and if no thought at all has been given to the packaging, uh, there's lots of wasteful space, then you basically get one on there. And similarly with environmental, the environmental um, score, um, this one looks like there's no consideration given to the sourcing, the production, the supply, delivery or disposal of the product. So I went online and I looked to see, did they have any uh, environmental policy on there? Do they have any kind of, think about Apple, they, they're probably one of the uh, the companies up there very open and transparent about their, you know, their actually how they source the materials. Is it 100% recycled, for example? Um, when they produce it, are they using green energy to produce the thing? Uh, when they did, when they supply it and deliver it, what are the CO2, uh, you know, carbon footprints of these things? And then at the end of the life, how do you dispose of it? Think about that robot that Apple have that will can take your iPhone apart and then recycle all the individual parts. So to get a good score on that, you need to be uh, thinking about that, have a policy and, um, and be sort of hitting all those points I've just mentioned there. So I think this one... Is where it probably lets it down a little bit i think if there's a bit a little less packaging and that they had a statement about how they how they produce this with an eye to making this more environmentally friendly then i think they would score higher so this is an area where I, i've looked at quite a few products to review and they all score quite low on this but this is something as companies develop you know apple is a multi-billion pound company nearly a trillion dollar company they can afford to uh to, to look into this and have somebody dedicated to that so if you like what I do, um, make sure you give this video a like. I can see we've got five likes in this video so far, and there's, uh, there's a few more than five people actually watching at the moment. So please give me a like if you're, you're liking this content. Drop me a comment as well. Is this something that you were looking at buying? Let me know what your comments are, whether you agree with my scoring, whether you think I've been too generous, not generous no enough. Uh, let me know what you think there. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already as well, what are you doing? I think 75% of people who watch this don't subscribe. So don't be one of those people. Um, definitely subscribe and help the channel grow a little bit more. I do go live every single Sunday at 7 p.m. Come what may, <laughs> whether I'm going to a steampunk weekend or not, I definitely make sure I've got some content for you. And I was even able to get some content live to you as well. So um, yes, uh, live every single Sunday, 7 p.m. GMT. Uh, and I'll announce that on Twitter as well. 
other things you can look at today, we're going to get to the unboxing in a second. So if you want to take a course on MicroPython or learning ROS or just an introduction to robotics or even how to make the eye mechanism for uh, Bubo, I've written some courses and you can go over to Kev's robot slash learn and you can uh, take a course completely for free at your own pace. So I've uh, put that resource together for everyone for free. And if you've not joined us on Discord, head over to Discord. It's completely free, as is everything we do here. Um, if you go to kevsrobots.com slash discord, you'll get a sign up link there. It'll send you an email after a couple of seconds, sometimes a minute, and then you can uh, join our discord group. And it's a great group of people in there. I love seeing pictures of robots, so that's the best place to have the conversation and post pictures. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm on uh, TikTok. So I'm Kevin McAleer6 on TikTok. Um, you can catch me on Instagram at Kevin McAleer. And I'm also on uh, Twitter, which is where I probably spend most of my time uh, tweeting stuff out. And I'm also on uh, Kev's Mac at Mastodon.social as well, which um, I try and cross post as where possible uh, from Twitter to there too. Okay, what else we got? So, of course, supporting the show. If you want to help support the show, um, you can do that in a couple of ways. If you're watching... Um, if you're watching live, you can do a super chat, which is a, a way of just uh, putting on screen a message that says uh, your name and uh, your message. Yes, they're all enabled. Just checking. Uh, if you want to do a super thanks, that's when I when I've recorded the video. It's finished. We've, we're not live anymore and you're watching it on replay. You can hit the super thanks button as well. Uh, and it's basically the price of a coffee. If you want to actually buy me a physical coffee, you can go to kezrobots.com slash coffee. And there's a buy me a coffee uh, website link there to do exactly that. Uh, or if you want to help uh, on a more long-term basis, you can also go to um, the YouTube membership program, and that's like a price of a coffee per month. Um, and again, that just helps support the channel, helps me buy all the bits and pieces that we need to build all these robots. Okay, so I'll just call out some of the supporters, some of the people who have already supported the channel. Uh, and this gets refreshed oops, every time we do a video. So, um, And I basically cut off a month's worth on the supporter side. So we can see there we have uh, we have Justine, we've got Roland, uh, Zagaldia, we have Bill P, Mark, David, Shroomy, Derek, um, RGS. We have um, Roland again and Bill Bernard. Uh, Bernard. We have um, three members. We have um, Tom Weiser, Shemi, Steve Phillips. And um, on the that looks like that's an old one. I wonder why that is. I'm sure there was um, some extra people in there. That's what I'm thinking. Um, I'll have I'll dig that out in a second. Just make sure we get the right people, and then we have um, um, Sadiq. We have Jeff. We got WP Body, Fred Moore, Bill. We have um, Dale from um, Hybrid Robotics. We have uh, Hans from Cheerlights. We have Michael, Jose, um, Joanne, John Paul, and Tom as well as YouTube members. So thank you all for supporting the channel. And if you want to help join this, you can head over to kesrobots.com slash credits as well. Okay, so let me jump back over to our keynote. And let's see what's next. Unboxing. Okay, let's get to it, shall we? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you on the overhead here. We've got a second camera as well we can look at. So this is the box here. You can sort of see the, the oops, the size of the box. If I go back to the overhead there. I've also got some tools. I've got my trusty uh, iFixit kit just in case we uh, we need to do anything. But it does actually come with some uh, some tools. So just let me know if the, uh, the microphone is okay and you can hear me okay as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open it up. So the, the box is very nice. I do like that. And the first thing we're presented with is a great big piece of plastic. So let me just try and get this out. This is one of the things I was like, why is that in there? That's When that lid's down, this is adding absolutely no value from my perspective at all. It just seems an unnecessary piece of plastic. And I don't know whether I can recycle that or not. There's no markings on it that usually have the recycling logo. Um, and that will... Have, come on, Trying to get the uh, thing to focus. And somebody would have had to design that piece of plastic. That's the thing that's frustrating is somebody's actually spent time making sure that fits and that's got all the cor correct corrugated parts to be uh, structural and so on. So then we've got this uh, little letter that just says, welcome to uh, Petoy Camp. And they've got some links there to the documentation, docs.petoi.com. Uh, you can use that QR code or you can just visit the site. And uh, they've got like how to get support as well. And it says on here the checklist. So password, pass card with hints. So there's our postcard, sorry, pass card, postcard with hints. The body frame with cover, I think that's in there. We have the head, the battery, which is under there. There's a screwdriver. There is a 
servo with long cable, servo with short cable, a cross shaped servo arm, um, some M2 um, screws which are 5 and 8 millimeters. Uh, we have a spring, got a USB programmer, a Bluetooth module, a Wi Fi module, a Raspberry Pi socket, and there's an upper leg with cable, lower leg, the NI board. The L-shaped calibrator, which we need to, to calibrate the leg servos, an infrared remote, a tail, and the micro USB cable. And there's also add-ons that you can get. Now, we've not got any in here. So there's a battery, an intelligent camera, a servo set, a B board, and a NI board. Um, not sure what that difference is between that and the, the version 1 NI board. But you can basically get extra add-ons there. And I believe one of these packs has the, the bone in it. And that's, uh, that's where that is. I was looking to see where the little bone was. Okay, so we have yet another piece of plastic in here, which is just holding, I guess, the head in place there. So again, that's a piece of plastic that's been designed just to hold that in place. That will already be held in place when this is down. So I'm not really sure is that going to escape. I question, can they do this? But with cardboard, could you make a cardboard shape that's just a couple of different levels that is recyclable. This is nice, this is recyclable. I'm going to turn off on the camera, on the overhead, um, the product mode, so it shouldn't change, it should, the focus shouldn't be changing all the time now, so it should be a little bit stable for you. So let's just take out this, this is the, uh, the main body, and there is, if I just squeeze that piece of there like so, this comes attached, or detached, and this is where we can put the first thing, which is our our USB battery pack or LiPo battery pack. So this is 7.4 thousand mAh at 7.4 watts per hour, five volts at 1.5 amp. So there we go. And this simply just clips into place. So on the, oops, on the back there, I'm gonna drop so much stuff in the show. On the back there, there's like a little shape, almost like a bone shape. And there's a corresponding shape there and this just flits into that and slides like so and then we can just put the, I think the cable down there to connect to I guess that's where the the motherboard is going to go and this just clicks into place like so it's very nice and sturdy um, nice sort of design you've got the Petio logo on there as well so I can just uh, take that off for a second move that back so we've got a bit of work area then we've got the head I love this this is what I was saying about the uh, the head has got a tiny amount of grip on there. So if I have something like, I don't know, let's get something that um, it can bite hold of. Let's see if it can bite hold of this. I've got a iFixit component there. If I, if I do that, it can grab hold of it. You can see it's just by the friction of that little piece of plastic there on the back. There you go, I've dropped something. If you're playing Kev Bingo, you can take that one off. Right, there's the head. Another piece of plastic. On the tower of plastic that I've got over there. Next, we've got the servo box. So in here, there's a whole bunch of servos. I'm not sure why they need to be in here. I guess it's to when they're shipping. And these have got different lengths, I understand. So there's short ones and there's longer ones. And these are all uh, PET OI P1S. So these are all sort of custom, got custom stickers on them. They're very nice, and very nice design. And they look like they're, they're metal. So I think these are like metal gears. Just trying to see if I've got any other servos to compare this to. They look very similar to the, um, the DS929MGs that I'd like to have, but they're a little bit shorter. I don't know if you can see there, a little bit shorter. But yeah, the, uh, they've got a nice little logo on there as well. Get that into uh, to focus. Now I've turned the product mode off. Let me just turn that back on for a second. There we go. You can see there we've got the little face. P0, sorry, P1S, P1S. And it's got like a bit of a slant to it as well. Not sure what that's for. Okay. So there's a whole box of them. We have a little screwdriver tool, it's like a the Phillips, a very, very fine Phillips. Got a whole bunch of screws. And we've got some extra modules, and I think these are the official Bluetooth and Wi-Fi modules. So yeah, PET OI USB adapter, 
and I can see a Wi-Fi thing in there and I guess that must be a Bluetooth one as well so we'll just take that out put that to one side I'll put these just make some space let's move some of these other bits out of the way and there is another piece of plastic so let's take this out this is why I scored it low I don't think all these pieces these layers of plastic really add the value that they think they do it could just be cardboard think about how Amazon package things like if you buy a Kindle it's all cardboard so in here then we have um, a number of different things that this I'm trying to get out here now that is our calibration tool I like the idea of that so when we put in our servos uh, into place there we can make sure that they're calibrated correctly at 90 degrees and we've got a number of different things in here so I don't know if it's easier to, to pull all this out so there's the board that's the main Nyboard version 1.2 now you can see there that these are where all the uh, the servos plug into so you've got your um, let me get this right so you'd have the signal the 5 volts and the ground the, the, this, the power is always in the middle so if you put it in the wrong way round all you're doing is putting the signal to ground and the ground to signal you're not going to short these out so it's a nice little design touch for servos and then on here it says there's a, a switch you can either have Raspberry Pi or Arduino and there's a, a little connector there which I think is the uh, GSTPH connector for the power and there's also a buzzer as well and that looks like a little infrared um, sensor just hanging out there as well We've got all these Grove connectors so what do they say on them so I squared C analog digital digital one digital two I'm very worried about this little um, transformer that's on here I don't know if we can see that but it's got like a little chip missing on it I don't know if that's going to affect it at all um, I noticed that when I very first opened the box I'm hoping that isn't going to affect how it operates We've got an RGB LED pixel there we've got a reset button and I'm guessing we've got that's probably the main processor there which is the uh, AT Mega and I'm not sure what the other chips are on there but yeah looks pretty good so you've got the crystal down there as well Okay, so that's the main board. We'll, we'll fit that in a second. We've got our USB cable. So this is a USB micro B cable. We've got a remote control, which is in some plastic. There we go. And there's a little pull thing to enable that to switch on and off. This is very nice. I like the design of this. Um, if I can show you that without the, the light, get that to zoom in the correct zoom. So we've got a sleep button, there's like an up, down, left and right, there's a dog button in the middle. Looks like there's some kind of speed or dashboard thing. You've got a pause, I think that's a calibration button, and then there's all these different poses. A, B and some kind of settings thing as well. So I'm liking that, it's very nice and light, and I'm guessing that that's got inside um, the battery already. So let's just check that out. Yep, so it's just a little CR2025 20, 20, in there. That looks fine, let's just put that on there. And then we've got all the, the individual leg components. So these are all the feet. We have the thigh mechanisms. These are not easy to get out, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that, throw that down there, and then try and pop these out. This is where I don't think the plastic is actually adding any value. They certainly stay in place, but you've got to sort of pop these out to get them. I'm not sure why that adds value to keep them in place I mean it makes them look nice when they're on a shelf if the lids open I guess that's my favorite bit the, the actual tail is a sort of rubber <clears throat> which is quite nice I'm liking that okay so what we'll do now let's go back over to um, to me for a second over here and let's load up the uh, the website so we can actually get some instructions you can see as well the quality of the documentation that we have so if I go over to here I share my screen um, so yeah here we, here we are we can see we're on tools and preparation and uh, you can see there's a drop down there as well for the different languages so that's pretty nice um, okay so one thing I know about uh, uh, that's Chinese there when you see that symbol which is like um, a rectangle that's been sliced in half that means middle and then that next symbol is a writing table so it's like a um, a flat surface with two legs and there's a little pen on the on the top um, and 
back in the day, <laughs> back in the day when there was the sort of Chinese dynasty, um, only the people of the highest sort of caste would have uh, the ability to read and write. So um, that actually means kingdom. When you can, um, when you when you are posh enough to have a pen and paper and a writing thing, it means you're part of the the kingdom. So middle kingdom is what China was called, what it's referred to. So whenever you see that little rectangle with a, a line in the middle and the little writing table, that means middle kingdom. So that means Chinese. Um, I'm not sure what that one there means. It might be simplified Chinese. I'm not sure. <laughs> so there we go. So that's what a uh, little lesson in Chinese for you there. Okay, so we've got the uh, the flat um, Phillips screwdrivers. Um, so have I got a flat one? I'm going to use my iFixit kit for anything I don't have to hand. But I've got a number of screwdrivers. Um, we've got a computer. We've got a USB charging thing. That's all good. Right. Open the box. We've opened the box. They've got a nice little video, and you can see there. There's a there's a pre-assembled version, which the robot comes pretty much pre-assembled, apart from the uh, Bluetooth and USB modules. You can also see there the construction package, which is what we've got, and uh, that we've just been opening out. And they've got a guide there uh, on how to do this. And that's what the robot looks like when it's uh, sort of powered off. And it says, uh, pay attention to the direction of the head and the servo joints. So you can see there, there's the, the actual spindle of the servo is that side. It's always at the lower part, not the higher part. And that's just to give the, uh, the legs the sort of largest freedom of movement there. And then it says, a uh, long press on the battery button for two to three seconds to power off. So we'll try that in a minute. So the first thing we need to do is just put all the servos into place, I guess. So what I don't want to do is just rush ahead, put them all in place, and then have used the wrong type. So I'm guessing, having constructed these types of robots before, the short cable versions are for the head and the tail. So I guess there'll be at least three of them. So the neck, head, and tail. There's actually four, five. And then there's another whole bunch of them. Looks like there's five of them for the main... Um, for the main robot. So let's see what we can do next. So da, da, da. board configuration. You can use the desktop app. You can use IDE. Okay, assembling the frame. That's what I want to do. So it doesn't tell you there which to use. So essentially, that these these four top ones here, and the neck one they are probably going to require the shortest cables and these ones are on the the feet they're going to require the longer cables would be my guess so let's have a look and just see if it says anything there about that the neck looks like it's already been assembled whoever put this together has already put that little servo horn into there and screwed it in place so that's fine let me show you how to do that so very detailed instructions really nice clear pictures again whoever's put this together has already clicked these into place and they push in and then click and hold um, so it's very nicely constructed. So that's already done for us. So we already have that essentially. And then, ah, there we go. And then the upper, the legs have already been put together, but I guess they're just showing you how these are constructed. And there's a, a very slight amount of give on the where the servo goes into the leg. Uh, and there's a spring mechanism. It just helps keep the robot from uh, sort of shattering if it, if it falls a bit too heavily. Okay, so does it say anything there? So we just need to use the uh, the M two eight millimeter screws. Can we see which of those? I'm going to have a look in this bag. So what I'll do, I'll go back over to our overhead for a second. Maybe give you a different angle so you can see uh, what else is going on. So I've just got this little bag out of the box, a servo box, and there's a whole bunch of additional pieces of. And they're really, really tiny screws. They look like the ones that would be... What do I think they are? They are very small. These ones look like the ones that they're actually after. So David's agreeing there on the chat about the packaging. There should be no reason the plastic can't be swapped out for cardboard. And it's good to see that uh, that's included in the review. I thought so. I thought I would include that because uh, it encourages companies to try and get a higher score on that as well. Because nobody likes getting a low score. So there we go. I'm just going to take a couple of these screws out and put them on here. I did see somebody had a nice little um, thing for putting screws in. It was like a little bowl and, uh, you know, you could sort of get them out a lot easier. I've not got myself one of those yet. 
Right, so I'm going to guess that I just need to undo these, this sort of tangle of servos. I'm not sure why they've been... They're inside plastic so that they can't escape. So I don't think there's any need to tie them in a knot like this. That just seems to be unnecessary and, and almost likely to damage the cables if people are not careful with them. I've gone to all that trouble to separate every component out and then they sort of tie them together. So I'm not sure the benefit there. Right, I've managed to do that. Probably more to do with the, when they're putting these together in the, the factory. They want to make sure they've got the right number, would be my guess. Right, so let's just see. These are all the same size. They do look like they are. Yep, so we've got long ones and we have short ones. See there, we've got the two different types of cable. Easy to see it that way around. So I'm going to keep the short ones over there for now. There's five of each. And there's only nine articulation points, so that's going to be interesting. So, do they say on... Uh, so they say do the feet first, right? So let's do the feet first. I think they're going to require the, the long servos, because they're furthest from the board. And they look like they're all the same. Making sure there's not like a left and a right orientation. No, they look, they look like they're all the same. And what it says on here is you sort of get it in that... Get it in that orientation, push that in, and then that needs to be that way around. You always want the, the pivot to be at the highest point, so you've got the furthest amount of articulation. If you had it that way around, you'd be sort of pivoting in the middle, and the leg wouldn't move as far, so that's why they always do that. These look like regular servo screws, look like self-tapping screws. So let's just uh, try and see if we can get them in. And what I always find as well, if, if you're screwing in and you find it, feel like it's it's going to thread, if you just go back a quarter of a turn and go in, back a quarter of a turn and go in, you'll find they're going a lot easier. It sort of bites the plastic a lot, a lot easier rather than just threading it. Okay, this is probably the boring part for you because you're just watching me screw things in. So again, we can just go back to that view just to make it a bit different for you. Let's see how that's going to go. So that feels rock solid. It's quite light as well. There's not much weight to that. That seems very nice. And you've got the little face there as well. So that's nice. Cool, cool. So that is the first part. And that's going to attach in to... Now, this is where that calibration tool comes in, I think. Because I guess what they want you to do is to get this so that it's at 90 degrees. Like so. It needs to go a particular way round. I'm guessing it's that way round. No, nope, it's that way round. So when you put that in, it should be at 90 degrees is what I'm guessing. And again, that's because when, when you turn the servos on, I think before you even push these in, you're supposed to connect it up and just calibrate them. Um, so do we need to do that? Does it say on the instructions that we need to, to calibrate it? says don't include them just yet basically just do all four of the legs and then do the the head or the neck where's that I've not seen that oh that's that that's the dog head piece so let me uh, find that I was looking for that piece and I'm like I can't find that but it's basically just that head upside down and we're gonna put a servo into that but I need to know it's the short servo as well for that one. So which way around do they put that? They're going to do it away from the neck, like so. Now it's a bit of a design... I want to say design flaw. I'm going to say a bit of a design challenge there. There's a, there's a piece there right in the middle, and the servo's um, wire is exactly alongside that, so that's going to always be off to one side slightly. Right, let's just get... Oh, I'm liking that as well. It's magnetic. That really helps uh, put this together. So let's just make sure... So the pivot point is going to be furthest at the back of the neck. Let's just tighten that up a bit. Let's get the next one in, and then we'll tighten all of them both up. I do like it when you include the correct tool, and it's actually quite a decent quality tool as well. 
what I don't like is when they provide a tool and it's like a really poor quality tool and you end up damaging everything. These are quite tough to get, to get in though, I'm telling you. Let's uh, make sure that's flat. And let's make sure that goes in. Yeah, just getting those last couple of turns on it is quite hard to do, but if you don't get them in there, it will rattle and it will be not quite right. There we go, that looks like that's solid. That looks good. So we've now got the, uh, the head done. So what else does it say? Uh, so up there, I think it basically just says we have to do both of these and make sure that they're in pairs as well. So I've done one. Um, so how do they... They've got the wire going through there, haven't they? <sighs> so this is what happens when I always rush ahead. So I've put that thing in, but I've not done that thing where they've sort of tucked the wire nicely through there. I bet that's too thick to go through, of course. So that means we're going to have to unscrew the thing enough to be able to get that back in. I don't know if you find yourself doing this. You follow the instructions, but you kind of skim read it. Or do you diligently read everything before you, <laughs> you make a start? So Adam says, the wire will come out, come out of the hand, the hat down the side of the head servo. Not sure what that means. Right, so what they had on here was kind of the wire in a kind of loop like that. Make sure we get this the right way around. Yeah, that's what they've got. Right, so let's just put these in. I'll get really fast at doing these once I've done the first couple. All fingers at, at the moment. And it goes in a bit easier the second time as well because the thread's been cut. Now I do have a threading tool. I don't know if you've ever used um, a tap for creating uh, th screw threads in plastic. Um, I've got a tap and I've pretty much got it set to, I think it's a, an M3 size. So I have it just here, just on my uh, pin board. And that's what the tap looks like. So you can sort of change the, the end piece there. And there's like a really fine thread. I don't know if you can capture that on the camera. Maybe not, but there's basically a very fine thread on there. And as you sort of t turn this through, there's a ratchet on it as well, so you can really ratchet it through. That's that's nice. You can reverse the ratchet that way. And that's really nice if you want to uh, just pre-thread these things so that everything fits through nicely. Right, so that's that first one done. Let's, let's see if we can get these done in sort of quick order. So first we need to, uh, to loop that round like so. And that's going to be the matching side to that. Let's maybe do it that way around. How's this going to work? So that needs to go through that side. On the top, like so. So I'm just trying to figure out in my mind I which way around these go. So we've got a matching pair and the, the orientation is correct. That looks good. I should get some more of those screws out from there. Like so we've got a spare spring as well. I always like it when they provide spares. That's another good another quality sign of a product there. It means uh, if, if anything happens or something breaks, you've got uh, an extra. I do like that about IKEA. If you've ever been to IKEA, they have um, in their customer service and like returns department, they have a wall full of screws um, and you can just go in and help yourself. Um, I've always wondered like, do they get people going in there like every day and taking another screw <laughs> so they can build something for free? But yeah, for IKEA are very good at get, making sure you get the right quantity in each of their packages and their quality, their documentation is very high quality as well. I like the way that they do it so that you can almost understand what you need to do just by the visuals. So there's not even like a, an instruction. So one of my uh, my robot maker friends, um, uh, Camilio, who does the Otto DIY, he's created some amazing documentation for his robot. Uh, it's one of the things that he spent clearly quite a bit of time on getting that right. And, and that's a similar kind of thing. You can just follow the pictures and see that that's right. Okay, so I've got the first pair there. Let's do the second pair. So that's gonna, let's try that one, that orientation. Which 
to move around does that need to go does that need to go on top like so yes that looks right <laughs> Adam always seems to type one of his comments wrong he's just said <laughs> for crying out loud why has one of my comments always got something wrong with it I don't know Adam what, what's going on there have you, uh, have you got autocorrect on Right, let's try and get this into place without threading it. Let's keep an eye on the time as well. I don't want to spend all evening building this, so I'll basically just take a view uh, in about 15 minutes, just see how far we've got with it, and then see how long we think it'll take to, to build the rest of it, but it might not be too bad. These are probably the fiddliest parts, I suspect. Right, so that's one, and then we just need to do the last foot and this is the opposite side so how is that going to work so that's the same as that one so this side it needs to go in that way with that on top Nope, that on the bottom. What? I'm confused. It goes on the top. Nope, start again, Kevin. Right, so that needs to go like so. That looks correct. Nope, that does not look correct. That would be the wrong way around. That needs to go there with that on the bottom. Right, that looks correct now. Okay, last piece in there. So the uh, the Bubo robot, I've um, started printing a second one out. So I had a, an email from Raspberry Pi um, saying that they'd like to exhibit Bubo at the Cambridge Festival this year. Uh, and I want to start carry on working on Bubo. There's quite a lot of software stuff I want to do to um, to improve the AI, the hand detection and so on, make that really reliable and quick. And also when you switch it on, it, it sort of boot up right away. So if I have to change the battery, you know, in the middle of the uh, Maker Central event, I can do that and know that everything will fire up properly. So that's what I want to do. And that means I need to have a second Bubo to be able to, to do that with. Right, I've got all the feet done. Let's have a look now and see what it says we need to do next on the uh, there we go. Uh, on the instructions. So we've done the head. The head is like so. That looks fine. Shoulder servos. Right. Okay. So do we just need to lay this out? Is that what it's saying there? Um, so the shoulder servos look like they are the smaller ones. I'm, gonna do, I'm just going to get it sort of organized on the desk like they've got on that picture there. So they've got the head. They have the. They have these little bits. There's there's like um, a foot, and the that bit is more bulbous. There's a there's a shape to it. You can see there. That bit is sort of pointing down. Like so, and what they want us to do. It looks like is have these shorter servos. Are ready to go, so that needs to go through there, and then it's flipped the other way around on that one. Like so, and then they want one leg, and then the same leg. Yep, that was right. They must be on the other side. Like so. And then we need we need one for the tail, I would have thought. Maybe that's not yet. Right. So and then they want us to, to put that cable also into there too. So 
So what I'm doing there, maybe if I go to that view, you can kind of see I'm following the instructions there and trying to get it laid out just like they've got it there. So let me just do this fiddly bit. Like so. That looks very odd. So they've got that like that. And then that's just going over there like so. Okay. And then that is doing a similar thing. That's going over there and through the back. Get that orientation. It's just odd that they've got it looped round like that. I'm not sure why that's like that, but it is. And then this one goes through. Oh, we need to get those other two on that side. So, and then this one goes through there. Okay. And then that wire goes through there as well. This is complicated, why is it? But all right, let's just grab that one through, and then let's grab that through there. Sheesh, all right, of course, all those are stuck to the motor because they're magnetic, all right? And then the last one goes in. Like so. Okay. All right, they're all they're all in. <laughs> Let's see what we need to do next. Of course, you have to lay it out very nicely like that. Look at that. <laughs> okay, uh, the head servo needs to go down there. So what I'm doing there to face feel it like so. And then that needs to go just off to the side. Okay, mine's not as neat and tidy as theirs. And then you can just put the screws in, right? That's nice and easy to do. I guess they're laying these out because when we want to calibrate everything, um, that just makes that whole piece a lot easier to do. So that wire needs to be, keep going through there. Let's go over here for a second. So I just need to get that wire through that little hole. It'll get easier once we've screwed every piece into place as well, because it's got less places to go. Right, there we go. Yeah, and they're really, really snug fit as well once they're in. And let's go to the overhead there. This one kind of goes underneath. You'll probably see it a lot easier in the diagram there, the wire kind of goes underneath. So I just need to screw in two screws on there. So we're just at about three minutes past eight at the moment. What's Adam saying there about um, <laughs> auto mistake? <laughs> Okay, let's put this tiny screw in place there. So fiddly. What I might do as well, I can zoom in a bit now that we know what we're working on. We can just 
hit the zoom a bit better like that. There we go, that one's done. Okay. Just need to do that with the rest of them. <laughs> so it should be, now that we know what we're doing, that should get a bit easier. I do actually have an electric screwdriver, but I find that if I use that, I end up with threading things. It's very easy to do, especially when it's the first time you've screwed these screws in. I could actually just screw one screw in, and that will probably be enough uh, to hold it. I usually do that if I'm just trying something out. I want to make sure I've done it right. And let's just see how quickly we can get the rest of these in. I appreciate this is probably uh, very interesting to watch. <laughs> There we go. Okay, that one's done. So we can spin this round now. And we just need to, these have just slightly come out, so I just need to put them back in place. And the other wires are staying in place now because we've screwed that one in. So that makes that a little bit easier to do. So that just needs to go in there. That needs to go up there like so. Yeah, let's just do one screw. I think I'll do with these. For now, I'll just do one screw for each of them, and that means we can blast through that part of the build. Do anything next on the neck or anything, or is it just calibration? Let's have a see. Yep, so it says put the power in now. So, where did I put the power? The power is there, so there's the uh, the cable for the power. And then, do we need to put the connect the board up? Now, they've not said anything about touching everything yet so let's have a see right so i'm following the instructions at no point have they said to actually yeah right this annoys me this kind of thing let me just go back over to the uh, the instructions so we've been diligently following these instructions one step at a time uh, at no point is there any board screwed in so it goes from that to that one there where there's clearly a board attached and they're connecting the battery to there. And you can see there that the, the board is definitely <laughs> connected up on the other side. And look, it's already screwed in. So I'm not sure what step I missed out there, but that wasn't in any of their instructions. Um, I find that a bit frustrating. So does it matter which we plug in? Let's basically just plug in. There. Does the, surely there's a configuration thing that says so there's another one about connecting the wires. There we go. I knew there would be. Right, so if I have the board, let's just have that double screen as well so we can see what we're doing. So if I have the board here, which way round? So these have got numbers on them. So zero is, zero is, is this very first one here. That's zero. And zero is the neck. So we find the neck one. And which one is signal and which one is ground? So that's not clear. Have they got a diagram for that? Yes, they have, which is just there. So ground is the top one, ground is the black, so the black is the top, like so. And right, what's next? We just need to know the order of these and we can plug them all in. So where is where is the next one? So 
Now, have they got the robot with the same orientation as me? Yes, they have. So I put it that way around. I put that there. So, 8 is the shoulder one. So, it's this one here. That is going to... Eight, really? So they've got eight connecting just there. But eight isn't eight isn't on the same thing as zero, so I'm confused already with that. I mean I can connect it up to the one they've said, but eight is around the other side. Well that that won't even stretch. So that's very confusing. <sighs> Why do they do this like this? So as you look at this, they're connecting zero up to actually number seven. So I'm going to spin that round. I'm going to connect that to number seven. Ground being up. Yeah, this is not very obvious. And then that is... I'm going to connect to 8. Right, yeah, that can connect to 8 there. Right, that's 8. And then 9 is on the opposite side, so there's the shoulder one. There we go, that's 9. I mean, what I would do on this, if Personally, I would make it so you can put any in any order and then in the calibration you can basically just fix that up um, so that's them ones done and then 12 is the front foot well, 12 is on that side there Yeah, this is really messy. I don't know. I don't know why they've got that. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put all the other servos in at this point. I'm simply going to apply the power and let's just see what happens because I don't think that is the correct orientation. And then you hold down the power button for two to three seconds, it said. So where is the power button? There's the power button on the battery itself. Nope, oh, so let's just uh, see what it says we need to do next. Um, so we've done that. Okay, so it says there you don't need to worry about what relationship they have. That's good. Um, what else is there? See, they've just done a couple there to test it. And they've also got the infrared sensor as well, which is just hardwired to the board. Okay. Uh, there's the section where they're screwing it in. So, <sighs> okay, and that's the board. So at what point do you just press the button? Oh, they've got a different type of board there as well. Prepare for calibration. So in there's the little button for calibration. I just want to know where the power button is so we can press that and we can just see if something comes to life because that calibration shouldn't take too long to do. Um, I don't really care too much about the calibration piece. Let's just zoom out. Final assembly. Okay, that's all good. Look at that as well. They've got like a little thing for the wires to go into, which is really nice. That's a really nice touch. Does that mean they come off? Curious to see how that works. I'm just trying to pull the uh, piece of plastic off. That piece of plastic there, they've got that off there. So how did they do that? All right, just pushes off. 
Let's see, let's get your fingernail under it. So I'll just show you that. So on these, um, on these legs, they have uh, this little plastic shield piece and you can just pop that off and then you put your servo wire underneath that and then pop it back on like so. And that goes on really nicely and it's got a little pin thing there to just hold it into place. And these are what are going to attach the, the servo that's on the sh shoulder to the foot. Um, and they've got a little bit of a spring so that the the uh, the thing that the, the servo horn um, is, is got a bit of a spring. So it's not directly connected to the, the limb itself, which is nice. Um, so I'm just going to quickly skim through and just see if we can see where the power button is on here. Oh, they've got the tail there as well. That's a nice touch. Playing with Bittle. Um, if we just want to know how to switch it on, that would be nice. Use the infrared remote. Yep, oh, there's the key maps. <laughs> Butt up. <laughs> P. <laughs> this is going to be fun to play with. Uh, what else have we got on here? Custom calibration. Da, da, da. Right, let me just have a look and just see what I can see on here. So that's the reset button. There's nothing. There was only one button on the board. Anyway. I just held down um I just held down the, the reset button just to see if that would do actually do anything. Why am I not in focus? <laughs> there we go. Uh just to see if that does anything. Um, I actually don't know if the, the battery is fully charged or not, but I can't obviously I can't see an obvious button on there. Um so I think you just power that plug that in to power it. There's a toggle on it for toggling the uh, Arduino or iOS. And then the only button I can see is the reset button. Yep, there's definitely no other buttons on there. Hold down the reset button for a couple of seconds. No, it's happening on there. Um, and it, it won't be the case that you have to have all the uh, the servos plugged in to get this to come to life. I know that won't be the case. You, all that would happen is just you'd get a, a particular number of them moving. So which way around do these go? So I think what happens next, what happens next then, because we're going to run out of time on this. It's going to be like a four hour live stream otherwise. So we would push this into place on the, uh, that way maybe, um, on the limb so that we can have a limb like so. And then we would do the same on the, the bottom one. Yep, that's going to be correct. Like so. And then we would check with that tool that it's exactly at like 90 degrees. Um, I'm not sure how you use this tool, but yeah, you basically just have to check that that's at 90 degrees so that it, all the servos are correct. But before we push them in, the servos have to home to like their 90 degree or zero degree mark, depending on which orientation they will be in. Um, and that's how we would put that together. And similar with the head as well, we just have to make sure that that's um, that sort of oriented at 90 degrees before we push this into place, but the head would just push in like so, like so. And then once we've got all these servo things plugged in, I'm just going to have to figure out which is the right orientation for them. I'll probably do a quick mid midweek video just showing that they're actually working once I've got this uh, all done. Um, not sure how you actually charge up the battery. I've not seen... Uh, Oh, there is a tiny little um, micro USB cable for the battery. What we what we could do is plug that in and just see if it if it springs to life. It could be that the batteries come. The batteries normally come about eighty percent charged. That's normally the thing, isn't it, with the uh, with micro USB? So if I unplug that, I get a cable. It's that one. Let's try this cable out to see if we can get some power to this. So I'm just going to plug this into the USB on my computer, like so. And we've got the USB-B cable there. Let's plug that in. Hopefully everything doesn't set on fire. And then let's plug this in. 
that's not an easy fit that yep there's now a light appeared on there ah is that the I've now discovered where the power button is so there's a little button I thought that was a screw let me show you on the overhead why they couldn't put a little thing saying on off so on there let's get this to, uh, to focus 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 Why does this never want to focus when I want it to? Let me just zoom out a second. Let's get that a bit closer. There we go. Right, I thought there was a screw, and that was another screw, and that that screw just was popped out slightly, but I think that's actually a button if I hold that down. Two, three. That does nothing still. Let's remove that and try holding down the power button for a second. Aha! There we go. Right, so there's, uh, there's some little lights that have just appeared there, like a blue and a yellow light. That's very nice. I like that. Uh, and this is... This is a bit fiddly. <laughs> so at the moment I've got the, uh, the power going to the board, but I think I've probably wired that the wrong way around. I think what I probably need to do is have that come up through the other side. Yeah, can I actually get that out now? Let's just swap that to the other side, because that's the side that has the uh, the power connector on it, like so. That might make it a bit easier to uh, to get at, like that. It's a little tune. I don't know if you heard the little tune. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's still a bit of a tight fit there. I don't think that's. I don't think they're in the right orientation yet. So it has got like um, the remote control. If I press the calibrate button on the remote and point it at the remote control, yep, it's accepted that. But it's just as I'm pressing the things, it's just doing a beep sound. So I don't know what that means. Well, the good news is that that damaged boat, that little chip that looked like it was damaged doesn't seem to be causing any problems. It's not getting hot or anything, so that's a good sign. And the fact we've got some light showing there as well, that also gives me hope that we can uh, we can get this up and running. So what I'll do is I'll power it down now just by holding down that power button for another couple of seconds. There we go, the blue light's gone off. I'm guessing that means that's everything off. Um, and I'm just going to quickly skim through. I don't know if anybody's... Ah, we have Pet Eye on there already. Uh, hey, how are you doing? Let me just have a quick look and see what you've said in case you give me any tips there. I was trying to find the power button. I couldn't find that on uh, on anything. So no need to read the numbers printed on the board. Brilliant. That really helps. The battery won't supply power when charging. Perfect. Right. Okay. So now that I know that, I can very quickly plug these in without caring which order they're in on the board. Tell me if I'm doing this wrong, please. Okay. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get them to fit to the best side and hope that it doesn't matter the order that they're in. Let me know if that's right. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? So are you watching from Beijing at the moment or are you, uh, are you more local? Right, so we just need to make sure the black side is down on all these. That's the ground. And does it matter which way around I plug these in? Or can we, can we do that in software in a minute? Right, so that's that side. These are this side. So I'm just going to do whichever is nearest to it. Like so. It'd be great to get this actually walking about while we're here. Okay. Spin that round. Jensen at fourth. <laughs> My goodness. Thank you for joining. That really appreciates the support there. Right. Okay. So let's just plug these in. And at the beginning of the show, I was just showing a couple of, uh, of the open cat robots that I built. I built, um, you'll probably see them on the other camera there. Um, there's a green one. And there's a yellow one which has got the, uh, the the rabbit head on. So we were just uh, having a play with that just beforehand. So let's just 
zoom back back on, on this. That's good. There we go. We can see a bit better now. Okay, so we just need to get those other two plugged in, and then we can get to the next part of this. Just gonna whack these in anywhere. Okay, so the last one is just the, the head. Like so. And I think that is all the servos in place. So we can just pull the cables down now just to give them a bit more. That one's, that one's not right, that's the wrong way around. There we go. Let's just pull these down a bit, like so, and then we just need to screw in, I guess in the last four screws, I'll just do two diagonal ones, sorry, just off camera a bit there, just trying to fiddle with that. So the grove socket should point to the head side. Should point to the head side. Is that is that correct? Or should they be should they be the other way around? Is that what you're saying? So we'll see what on that picture there. Um, let me just jump back to the other the picture. Just trying to find on the. Uh, the web page there to see. I love the documentation, by the way. It's great. Just apart from one or two bits. <laughs> uh, there we go. Right. So the grove. Right. I see what you're saying. Okay. So let's just swap that around. Just swapping this round so that it's in the correct orientation, like that. Uh, and now we can uh, put these in the right way round. So the white wire is going to the top, and the black wire is going to the bottom. The ground is to the bottom, I'm assuming. Yeah, if you ever want any product testing, I'm really good at this kind of stuff because I'm stupid. I make all the kind of mistakes that everybody else will make. You can ask uh, Pimeroni about that. <laughs> I break all their things for them. There we go. Okay, so we've got those three there. So let's do that one. Oh, I'm uh, showing you that and I'm like working away here. Let me go back to that so you can see. Sorry about that. And then that last one there as well. Okay. Right. So that should now be the right way around, shouldn't it? Thanks, Laurie. I shall see you later next week. Enjoy this Super Bowl. Oh, we have a, a new subscriber, Intelligent Just Read. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you. 
Okay, let's just get this last piece in. I'm just going to do two diagonal screws for now, just to uh, speed up this process a little bit. Okay. So, let's just jump back to the documentation for a second. So we were at the bit where we were just about to, so we connected all the wires up and we were going to do the final assembly. Um, so there's a, there's a screw for the head. So are these the smaller screws or are these the four millimeter ones? Yep. Case. So what I'll do is go back to that overhead there. So these are the smaller ones. These are like the ones that go in the middle of the servo. And these they made of metal because it's like a metal spindle on the servo, isn't it? And then there's a hole just down there, so we just need to get that in there. And just tap. I'm doing this before I've calibrated it, I appreciate that. So let's have a see what else there is to do on there. So let's go to that view there so we can see we have. Uh, I do love that wire shield, that's a really nice touch, that's a really nice. Uh, design feature that um, so so it's better to screw in, after, screw in after calibration to avoid getting the servo stuck with the body right I'll not do any of the rest of them I guess the head might be okay for that um, and then to calibrate so on the calibration thing um, so we can either use the pet OI mobile app the desktop app or the Arduino IDE I am going to try the mobile app because I have a phone here. Let's just, uh, I was saying to the viewers just uh, at the start of the show, a lot of the um, the effort that goes into um, the App Store, there you go, App Store. A lot of the effort that goes into building a robot is often behind the scenes and it's in the software development. So having to create a mobile app for iOS and then a mobile app for Android and then a web app and then a desktop app and then an IDE, uh, you know, a, a, um, Arduino IDE library, then a Python library, then the code blocks one, the scratch. Um, so pet, pet, OEI, comp. Let's see if I can find this. there we go get the robot control app okay so that's now installing on my phone now I wonder if I can share my phone screen so you can see what I can see let me just go and grab a cable might be able to share my screen on my phone you see is what I'm thinking right so that's now just uh, doing its thing the app's just downloading on my phone just waiting for that to uh, to finish what it's doing so how do I share my screen on here then I do that and I do that button. There we go. So there is a button for sharing my screen. I'm going to try this as an experiment. See if this actually works. I 
Okay, so I think we've got the app downloaded now. Let me open that up. Okay. Does it agree to the terms and conditions? And there we go. And we've got a list of Bluetooth devices. So I'm guessing what I need to do first is just uh, power this up. into place like so and let's see if we can get to find this we scan for selection and what name are we looking for so does it say just looking for the name of the Bluetooth Oh, so do we need to plug in the Bluetooth module? So I have a number of uh, connectors here. There is a USB adapter. There is a Wi-Fi adapter. And there is a Bluetooth adapter. So the Bluetooth adapter has got a number of ground ground plus. And there is a little cable here. And I don't really think I should do this while this is powered on. So let me just power that off. Okay, and let's just make sure we get this the right way round. It's ground, 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 ground. Like so. So I've got that that way round. Does that look correct? Okay, why is that not zooming in? There we go. There we go. So I've got the Bluetooth adapter with that text that way and the, the the circuitry is pointing backwards. Let's power this on. Okay, let's go back to the app and rescan. See if we can find it on here. So the LED is flashing on there. And we're looking to see something that's called bit BLE, something like that. There it is. Let's connect to it. We've got a nice little noise there. It's connecting. There we go. Please assemble first. I've assembled it. And we've got this really nice uh, uh, thing here. So how do we calibrate it? So we need to do next select robot dot 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 calibrate there we go so please install the limbs so the upper and lower limbs are perpendicular to each other so yellow side goes on like so let's just remove that Perpendicular. Perpendicular. Perpendicular and perpendicular. And then the last one, perpendicular, like so. Oh, 
Okay. The robot is perpendicular. Let's uh, see it from that side, like so. Now let's go back to the app. So calibrate. So please install the limbs. Pick a servo from the pitch above. Adjust the angles until they're 90 degrees. Right, so the head. Experiment and see what happens when you press the buttons on the app. So what's happening on the app is there's some buttons. Might be easier to see on the overhead. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there's some buttons there. It says that the angle of the servo is zero, and you can do plus or minus like so. So let's try pressing that one there, which is this one here. Doesn't seem to do anything on there. Reverse the server connection, the black cable near the PCB. Right, I thought it was the other way around. I thought, judging from the other diagram. So let's try that. Now the good thing with servos is, is that the five volts is always in the middle. So if you do get them the wrong way around, all that's happening is that the signal is going to ground and the ground is going to signal and you don't actually get any problem there. Um, it should be plugged close to the board, right? Thank you for that. So let's power this off just to be sure. Okay, and then let's just quickly just turn all these round like so. How does it know which is which? That's what I want to know. At no point have we said which connection goes to which port on here. How does it know which is which? If I've just randomly put them in any port, do we not need to map them in the software somehow? Or should they have gone to a very specific servo port on the motherboard? Okay, let's put that one in there and then the last one in there. So I'll leave this dangling for a second just in case I've got that wrong again. Power up. Powered up. Let's get all the. God, <laughs> it sprang to life then. That, that's a good sign, that means all the servos are actually connected up. Um, however, I think we now need to run through the calibration properly. Okay, so the head one, for example, that we know that's probably wrong then, isn't it? So do I need to reattach the Bluetooth? Let's just do that again. Right, let's just make sure we're connected. Uh, connect. Okay. Okay, we're connected up. So what orientation does it start in then? I'm pretty sure, oops, just, it's doing all kinds of things. It's trying to correct itself, I think there, isn't it? I keep my fingers away from that. Right, let's go back to the calibration. Right, I see, I see what's happened there. So I can now put those all at the correct right angle.
Okay. Okay, there we go. Now uh, let's go back to the calibration screen on here. Oh, good grief. It's gone completely out of focus that. There we go, sorry about that. Okay, calibration. So let's try the neck. Interesting, that doesn't seem to do anything on the neck one. Let's try that one. Yeah, I can see that's moving. Right, I can see that's moving. So if we go to the side view, so as I'm pressing the plus and minus button, this shoulder is actually moving. So we want it to be completely flush with the ground. We can check that that's as it should be. That looks good. And then we can check that one there. So that's what I was wondering about. So I'm doing 12, but it's actually turning the head because I've got the head clearly in the wrong port. I wasn't sure whether we needed to uh, put them in the specific port number or not. So I will have to rejig those so they're actually in the correct one because obviously when I make this do like a stand thing, it's not going to work properly because they're connected to the wrong port. There we go. Yeah, so I can see that that's not quite where it needs to be. Cool. Okay, and interesting when you when you tilt this, it tries to correct itself. I'm liking that. That's the IMU, isn't it? Uh, working there. Okay, so what I'm going to get it to do is just go back to that calibration position where it thinks everything should now be at 90 degrees like so so what i've not done there is um when i plugged in the cables they need to go to a very specific port number and um, when i looked at the documentation um, that wasn't easy to actually do it wasn't easy to understand if i just find that documentation and show you what i mean um, this is where i kind of got stuck um, so let me just find this da, 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 da. so when i was looking at this this didn't seem to make sense um, so, so as I'm looking at the robot zero, which is the, the neck one, that needed to go to the very top port. So that needs to go to the very top port. Yep. And that top port is number 12. So as I look at that, that number on the side of the uh, the motherboard has a 12 on it. And that really confused me because there's a 12 there as well. But that one needs to go to the very back one. So the very back one there, which is that one there. That needs to go to Port there. Yep, and that's certainly changed the orientation of that. Okay, and then let's just see, let's just zoom in on that. And that one goes to that one there, which it is doing. So that that first leg I think is correct. So that means we can uh, we can screw in that leg. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to that one there for a second. Okay, let's check the next back leg. So that long one needs to go to 
there that one needs to go to the very top that port there and then the short one that needs to go to the next one to it let's just disconnect that before we do it because it's going to chop my hand off there we go so that needs to go to oh my this is fiddly right let's just do that there there we go Okay, so we can now push that on. We can push that one into place. Okay, and then we can make sure that calibration is correct because it doesn't quite look right there. So let's select the back leg. Number 11, I'm just selecting there. I'm just going to correct that. That looks correct now. Save that. And we can screw those little screws in. So the number on the board doesn't matter, it's handled by mapping. The number 12 drawn on the joint is just for indexing. Later we can send motion joints to that joint. I got you. That's, that was my misunderstanding. Okay. Okay, so now we just need to check these are correctly in the right place. So the short one needs to go to the second position. The longer one Hang on, that's not the right one. So the longer one goes to the top. The short one goes to the one next to it. Right. Okay. And then finally the top two, let's just make sure they're right. So the short one, which is this one, that goes to one there and then this one goes to that one there okay let's just put these screws in okay Power board the processor board back in place as well now that we know everything is the right way around. Just do one screw for now because I don't trust myself that I've got that right first time. For the first time, about 400th time. There we go. Screw that in. Oops. He's trying to correct himself. <coughs> <laughs> I love that feature. That's very nice. Right, let's go back to calibrate. Calibration. Okay. Well, that's interesting. That doesn't look right at all, does it? last one I thought I had all these correct hence why I put the screw in
So it probably only takes about half an hour to build this, but if you're an idiot, it probably takes you about an hour to build it. So we're at uh, 8.55 at the moment. So probably about an hour longer than I wanted to spend on this, but I want to get this working, uh, particularly as soon as we have uh, Pet OI with us in the stream. Right, let's try that again. Calibration, right, so let's try resting. That looks almost normal. The stand does not look correct on there at all, does it? So what have I done wrong there? That one doesn't look right. I wonder if I've got those two mixed up. So let's just uh, go back to calibration. Let me check that these are definitely the right order. Yeah, they do look right. That small one should be in there. And the long one should be in there. So that looks correct there. So let's go for the number 10 yeah they're the way around quickly take them out okay, I thought Thought I'd follow the instructions there, and clearly, once again, not. Okay. Let's just try making that stand. Yes, that looks better. Rest. Yes, that looks proper. So let's just calibrate that foot and I think we're good then. We can then press some of the buttons and see what it does. Okay. I'm loving the app. This is a really nice quality app. There we go. Okay, so let's just select the, uh, the foot. Let's just move that down a bit. Let's select the leg. That looks good. Save that. Okay, save. Definitely saved. Right, so stand. I'm liking it. And then walk. Oh, wow. That's a nice walking motion. Look at that. That's a nice walking motion. It's very smooth. Stand. And then let's make it rest. Lovely. Right, we can now screw that board into place so that's not floating about. And then we can play. It's generally not a good idea to sort of screw things in while things are plugged in, just in case you slip and some metal contacts touch where they shouldn't touch. Right, that'll do for now. But I've got two diagonal screws on there. I'll screw the others in once we need it to. Okay, so we're now go back, confirm all the offsets are good. So we can make it sit, <laughs> stretch, <laughs> say hi, <laughs> pee. <laughs> I like the shake. <laughs> we can make it do hip up, push up. It can do push-ups. Wow, look at that. That's amazing. Joy. Let's try some joy. Oh, did I press the wrong one again? Oh, there's joy. <laughs> Push. <laughs> Push left. Push right. <laughs> check. Let's check. Oh, he's checking. Left and right, I see. Oh, I like the... Uh, I like the ability to uh, to, to weigh. Um, it's for play, play dead. <laughs> I, like, I like the shaky foot. All right, he's correcting himself now. He can flip himself over. Oops. There we go. And he stood back up again. Wow. And there's a, there's a speed function here as well, so we can make him step when he walks. 
and there's a direction. You can make him crawl. Look at that. You can make him walk. I can make him trot. <laughs> I don't think it's suitable for my desk, the trot. Let's, I like the step though. And the crawl. It's sort of ninja mode. Oh, there's a there's a speed function as well. I don't press. Let's just try it on fast. Let's try. Yep, yeah, that's pretty fast. That is amazing. I'm loving this. I'm going to create a lot of videos with this. I can see this coming. That is amazing. Oh my goodness. Right. I'm absolutely loving this. <laughs> so why does he flip himself over like he's dead when you turn him on? Look at that. The ability to flip over is pretty impressive. My desk isn't big enough to to do that properly. Let's let's try that again. Oh, I've not put his tail on. That's not good, is it? His tail's not on. I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. After, I think. I can see what you need to do. You sort of push it on there. So, let's try something else out. I've got a board here. If I put him on this board and I try and move the board at an angle, I can feel it correcting as it's sliding. The angle of the feet are adjusting because of the incline. I mean, he's going to slide off there, but as I'm doing this, he's, he's sort of balancing. You can create a custom button with a command KBF for backflipping. <laughs> we have to try backflipping. Let's, let's create a custom command. Let's do that. So the code is, let's call it backflip. And the code is KBF. Let's try that again. KBF. Test. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's just try that again, shall we? <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. I think my favourite one is the, is the P. Because he shakes his leg. <laughs> That's just such a nice touch. And the uh, the say hi. I'm liking that one a lot as well. Play dead. <laughs> wow. That is so amazing. The motions are just so perfect on it. Let's try uh, the sit down again. So how do we do, how do we do rest? There we go. I like that. Look how flat that is. That is amazing. And his head's slightly tilted to one side when he does it as well. So if we make him sit, stretch. Say hi. The play dead is good, isn't it? I like the way the way that his foot twitches. This bit now. <laughs> but then he corrects himself, which is so cool. I think the problem with my desk is it's very slippy on here, so I'm quite impressed with how well he can uh, correct for that. So yeah, that is very, very impressive. What I'll do is I'll get him uh, on the other screen now. Let's go back to me over here. Let's pick him up and let's get him in focus there. So as I'm tilting it, can you see the, the feet are adjusting themselves? As I move it one way or I move it the other way, it's correcting for itself. And it obviously knows if I flip it upside down, it does that beeping sound to sort of say, oh no. And if I do, uh, let's do high. <laughs> I'm loving that. It's got my phone connected up there. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm going to have so much fun with this. So one thing I'm going to be doing next is uh, 
looking through what commands you can have, uh, maybe creating my own custom commands, doing some videos outdoors with this walking about, because why not? And uh, you can see that it's quite a bit smaller than the, that it's brethren. If I get that uh, on the screen there, you can see the, uh, the open cat varieties. They're quite a bit chunkier and bigger, and this is so much more refined and smaller. It really is something you can put on your hand there. So what I'm going to do is just turn off the power. And there we go. It's back asleep again. Cool, cool. So I think we're very much very much out of time over time, but I wanted to show you a couple of things just before we go. And that was some pictures of the Whitby Steampunk uh, Fair that I went to this weekend. So I'm holding my little Bubo robot, which you can just see over my shoulder is just there. Uh, this is a little robotic owl that I created with a sort of working eyes. It's got some really nice neo pixels in the, uh, the eyes. And it's also got a Raspberry Pi 4 inside with a camera right looking through the eye. So we can do some really advanced AI object detection classification with this. Um, and one of the pieces of code I wrote last week was it can do hand gestures. So if you do a peace sign like that, it can count the fingers on one hand. It can then take a picture and then tweet that picture or toot that picture out, hence the name Tooty. And I'm actually printing out a second Tooty um, at the moment. I've literally got my printer here. If I just whip this off, it's even still on the bill plate. I've got the second one just printing out at the moment. So I need to print the back part, the bottom part, and then that's good to go. So that's uh, what I'll be working on next. So I was there looking like a King Isambard Kingdom Brunel. And these are my two little uh, chihuahuas. We've got Archie on the left and Minnie on the right. They've got their little pirate costumes on. And they have a little dog pram just to keep them uh, keep them in one place and not getting trodden on. <laughs> we managed to buy a pirate ship wheel for the front of that as well. The amount of things that you can actually buy. And this was um, inside the steampunk event. You can see um, quite a few people dressed up in very unusual clothes, including this uh, rabbit person. And there's a uh, Bubo with a uh, Whitby Abbey in the background there. I think that's the... Uh, um, the other church and there's the Whitby Abbey and then this picture here you can't quite see just off the the bottom there that's many all these people are taking pictures they weren't bothered about my robot that I'd spent ages weeks building they just like the dogs <laughs> and this is where I got all the bits and pieces from so you'll often see like some unusual pieces that I have on some of my builds and I often get them from like maker fairs like this they'll just have like loads and loads of pieces and um, some of the more unusual outfits that people wearing this one will look like um, poison ivy she had all green makeup on the front and this woman here has got like a it's a, a, a skeleton of a bird inside a cage on top of a hat. So people putting things on top of their hats was very sort of commonplace there. And uh, so this guy, he had a propeller and it was continually rotating around, which I thought was pretty cool. And this lady here has a robotic dog. I don't think she made this. I think she's bought this um, herself. You can see my, uh, my mini there looking at this dog thinking, what is that? <laughs> so there I am. The steampot thing, but I think these were the best dressed pair that were there. Uh, and we were also looking at potentially buying some of these uh, lights. So this creator had created these um, steampunk style lights. There's like rocket ships as well. They've all got these nice dials on them. And these sort of Edison filament type bulbs. I think they're all LED bulbs. But all the brass work and cogs and things on there as well. So yeah, I thought I'd just share that. And um, thank you for bearing with me on this, this build. Um, I'm not very great when it comes to sort of building other people's kits. I just try and rush to the thing and make loads of assumptions and then get it all wrong. But um, yeah, so the only the only sort of um, um, criticism I had at all really was the amount of plastic that was in the uh, the box. Now, I appreciate that you want to keep everything in place in the box, um, but I think you could probably do that with a lot less plastic uh, just because it's not great for the environment. Um, and the amount of effort that you must have gone to to create all these pieces of plastic to make them all fit together um, I, I would try in future to do that with cardboard if possible. Um, that's my only critique. So I have written up a full review of um, the project of the uh, pet OI on kevsrobots.com. So if I just go very quickly over to kevsrobots.com slash reviews, you can get to that by going to robots and projects and over to the reviews button there. And you'll see that we have the, uh, the pet OI robot dog Bittle. And then you can see there, and you'll see why the review that I've given it. So I've got a few pieces there about the uh, pre-assembled and the construction version, the ease of use, the availability, the aesthetics, the price. Uh, so we were talking about the price before. The pre-assembled version is $248. The construction version, which is the one I've got, is um, 
Um, it's quite a bit less than that, so it's 231. And the developer version, I'm not sure what the developer version is, but that wasn't available. And you've got the three colours as well, the black, yellow and blue. I've got the black and yellow version, and then there's also a black version. And the build quality is absolutely excellent. The packaging, my only complaint really about the whole thing, and it's not even part of the robot. And you can see there on the, uh, the review score, so the, the pricing is about similar to its competitors, ease of use. As you saw in today's build, uh, there's some complex steps. It's more to do with me being an idiot, I would say. Uh, I might be minded to move that to a four, to be honest. Uh, functionality, it's very innovative. I'm very happy with that. It's very available. You can get this in any country. Um, aesthetics, it's a winner on that. Build quality, an absolute winner on that. And the documentation is great too. And then the only things I think let it down, and this is just my take on it, is the packaging. Um, there's quite a, a lot of layers of, of plastic um, I think we could probably remove them. It'd probably be cheaper to produce without those plastics, uh, those v vacuum form plastics. Um, and then if you have like an environmental policy on your site that just says, you know, this is sourced responsibly, materials are sourced, we use green energy, all that kind of stuff, all the things that are in this box here, then that would score higher there. Interestingly, Raspberry Pi don't have a uh, environmental policy that I could find on their website, so they've scored low on that one too. But I included that one just because, and I think if the packaging was like a five, um, then this score would be like a 4.7 probably as well. Because um, like I said, I'm probably minded to move that ease of use up one because the ease of use of the app um, is definitely something and the calibration that was very simple to do. It was just in the in the building together and getting the wires the correct way round. Um, so maybe some thoughts on that. So um, thank you so much for sticking with me in this build today. I know it's a bit of a long one, but I wanted to show you the whole process and then getting the robot to backflip. Oh my God, what? <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much for joining me in the stream and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.